Alrighty, pinning up a red dragon this time. This is Ember from the Reaper Bones line. Uh, this is where Reaper series really excels. You can get some huge models uh, for dirt cheap prices. This was only 20 bucks. Um, two things I have to mention on the start here. First of all, uh, for this D&D Dungeon Master series, I try to keep the paint jobs fairly simple uh, so they're easy to follow because I know Dungeon Masters have a lot of other things to do other than painting miniatures or in this case getting airbrushes and booths and all that uh, however i do have time constraints and uh, i needed a quick way to get the least at least the base coat down on this guy uh, secondly you notice i already started painting it over a red coat uh, that's because i initially started with a, a darker red and i decided to go with a lighter red so with that out of the way let's go ahead and continue with the painting or begin it i should say uh, starting off with a undercoat of Vallejo 926 red mixed with about equal parts uh, Vallejo game color gory red. That previous color is established in a base coat and where all the shade is going to be and we're going to lighten it up now by using uh, what I believe is a mix of gory red and Vallejo game color bloody red, a little bit of bloody red mixed in. Um, I know the colors I used on all these airbrushing stages, unfortunately I did not write down the exact ratios. So I'm going by eye here, so I believe that's what the rate, the, uh, the mix is right now, just a little bit of bloody red added to the gory red. But we're doing it over about 90% of the dragon, just leaving that previous color in the, uh, the shade areas, mainly underneath the body. This layer is a little bit more of the bloody red added, also with a little bit of flat yellow. And starting to work on some of the highlights. Uh, this is not gonna be the only highlighting colors we're putting on here. Mainly I'm just trying to block in the colors to help speed up the painting. We're still gonna do a lot more uh, highlighting and shade work on this once we get back to the painting desk. And then a final highlight just on the tips, uh, top of the wings and top of the body, uh, this time with a little bit more flat yellow added. And uh, I know there's not much obvious transition here, unfortunately. I'm not sure why. Um, it's just not picking it up with the camera. I didn't realize it until recording this now, doing the voiceover. Uh, but we'll see the variation when we get back to the painting desk next. Now we can start adding more precise details to the dragon now that we're back at the desk. And beginning with a dry brush of Vallejo model color light orange. And we are using a number 10 flat brush for that. The dry brushing gives us a good rough highlight on the scales, but do want to add a bit more detail. So now going back with that same light orange color and a standard number two brush and adding a bit more detail to the edges of the larger scales. And I'm going uh, basically perpendicular to the scales. Uh, so, you know, it's coming out from the, the recess of the scales going outwards towards the tips. So uh, that adds a, a bit more you know texture to it, makes it a bit more interesting than if we just go up and down, which would be uh, a little bit easier. Now I'm repeating that same process, but this time only on the upper scales or the larger scales and using a mix of the light orange that we just used mixed with some flat yellow. Uh, I am also over highlighting it because we're gonna be putting a lot of washes on this guy to uh, really give some definition to the scales. And so all these highlights are gonna get darkened eventually. For the washes, we are first beginning with a fairly thin wash of Vallejo Game Color Red Ink. Uh, this is actually more of a glaze, but um, because of the rough texture of the dragon here, it's kind of hard to do a very careful glaze, so I've added some glaze medium to this uh, so it doesn't dry with tide marks. And uh, the purpose of this is not actually to wash it, uh, it's just to add some more richness to the, the red color of the scales. And applying this glaze wash over that will uh, definitely make everything a, a more pleasant shade of red. It gives it a little bit of depth to it. 
After letting the red glaze dry for a couple hours, we can begin with the actual shading washes and starting off with a mix of red and violet Vallejo Game Color inks. And this is a fairly heavy wash. It is thin slightly. Um, not too heavy because we're going to go a bit heavier next. But uh, again, I have glaze medium added to this, so I don't have to worry about tide marks since I am just slapping this on very heavily to in order to uh, make this a quick project. Fortunately, don't have time to shade individual scales. And then for the second wash, we are using a mix of violet and black. Uh, there might be a little bit of red in here too, but definitely violet and black. And this is applied a bit more carefully, uh, mainly to the underside of the dragon. Uh, violet is a color you can use to shade red, and it, it shades it without uh, it losing its richness. I normally use browns for reds, which you can do, uh, but in this case, since it's a living creature, um, I went with purples as a secondary color to help liven it up. Brown would make it look uh, a bit boring, I think. It's fine for leathers or something like that, but for a live creature, yeah, the, the purple is a nice addition. The underbelly plates I am blocking in with Vallejo Game Color Plague Brown. And using yellow here is kind of traditional. Uh, it goes well with the red and uh, is very thematic for the color choice that we're using and for the subject. Uh, you could go for a more bone color if you prefer, but uh, yellow really does uh, highlight and enhance the red dragon look. For the highlights, I've mixed in some Vallejo model color beige, and so it's about a 50-50 mix, and we're applying it with the same uh, up and down technique that we used on the scales. Uh, this highlights the texture rather than obscuring it if we were to go uh, left to right in this instance. And then one additional highlight with more beige added, uh, just wherever I think it's needed on the edges uh, above that raised arm and on the center plates as well. And then we finish it off with a wash of Vallejo Game Color Brown Ink. Once again, with some glaze medium added to it, uh, so it doesn't create tide marks and allows us to put it on a bit more sloppily. And it also gives it, uh, it slows down the drying time, which means I can remove it from any areas where it pools where I don't want it, like the tips of any of the plates. On to the wings. Now the wings are textured, which means they are a perfect candidate for dry brushing. Um, negative side is the texture adds depth to them, so uh, trying to add things like veins or making them see-through or appear to be see-through uh, is a bit more difficult. So we're just going to go with a, a quick dry brush for the wings, starting off with basing them with some Vallejo Game Color Parasite Brown. Um, it's a very orange brown, so it still ties in with our uh, complimentary red colors. To begin with, we are starting off with a very, very heavy dry brush. Uh, the same Parasite Brown as before, mixed with uh, about a 50-50 mix with Plague Brown. And uh, as I said, very heavy dry brush. I'm actually going uh, with the grain because I'm trying to leave that previous Parasite Brown color mainly just in the recesses. Next comes a dry brush. It's a three color mix. It's the previous Plague Brown mixed with flat yellow and a little bit of beige. And I'm trying to concentrate the lighter colors more towards the center of the wing. So in some of the areas I'm going with the grain and then I, as I get closer to the the bony support fingers. Uh, we're changing that to a bit of a lighter dry brush, but uh, you can see the scrubbing method we're using here because it's a it's a fairly violent technique to get the the paint on this heavy texture. So 
it's, it's not a light, delicate brushing. It's more of a scrubbing your teeth type of dry brushing in this is, instance. After doing one final dry brush off camera with more beige added, we can go ahead and take care of the shade. For that, we're using a mix of red and brown inks just along the area where the membrane of the wings connects to the fingers. I don't know what you call it specifically on a dragon. Let's say fingers. So uh, doing a little bit of shading on the fingers themselves and uh, in that area where they connect. And with that done, we can move on to the next part. Getting down to the detail work now, and uh, for the all the little spiky bits, the claws and the uh, well, I guess they're claws too on the edges of the wings. Um, base coat those with a mix of khaki and beige, highlighted with a little bit of beige, and uh, now applying a wash of uh, Army Painter Strong Tone to them. Uh, normally, I would prefer to do. Uh, a few different layers layering up to like pure white or something like that but um, this is supposed to be a quick project so in this case the the strong wash works uh, okay the horns on this dragon just protrude out of the top of his head they don't come out of a a, a hole or any you know socket or anything like that they just kind of blend from the eyebrows out, which makes them a pain in the butt to paint, to be honest. Uh, beginning with uh, a mix of beige and I believe chocolate brown, and using a uh, more solid, more opaque color on the tips of the horns, but as we move down towards the, the eyebrow region where it starts connecting to the head, um, I'm using a, a thinner version of that same color uh, and slowly blending it into the red on the skull. And I am sorry about the flipping it around all over the place but with the wings and this getting into the small portion is very difficult to uh, keep it centered in the frame of the camera when I have to keep flipping the miniature all around to get uh, all the areas of the horns. Towards the tip of the horns we are highlighting those towards white and so starting off with just straight beige and then to that straight beige adding a white and I did about three highlights in total fairly simple at this point the trickier part is blending towards the bottom trying to disguise that area wherever maybe where the uh, head transforms into horns and going back with some very very thin chocolate brown and just slowly trying to uh, essentially turn the red of the head brown and then turn the bottom of the horns brown so uh, they eventually will transition see hopefully seamlessly between those two areas after that it still needed a bit more work to blend it in smoothly so i had to go with a, a bit of a darker brown a more intense brown so once again broke out the army painter's strong tone and work that into the horns and the top of the head to make the transition even more seamless. At this point, I decided to go back and look at everything I've done and do a little bit of cleanup work, uh, see where I still had time to add some extra detail. Uh, I added a bit more color to the face, the scales on the face, and also went back to some of the other scales all over the body and added a few more highlights here and there. I cannot tell you exactly what colors I use because I just had to mix something up that would work since the colors have transformed so much after all the glazes and the washes. So it's a mixture of yellows and oranges and a couple different shades of red. Just trying to find and mix up whatever color would be appropriate for the situation or the position that I put them in. The last detailed touch I decided to add was to add a, a little bit more purple to the scheme and also the fins going down his back I decided to make them look a bit different than the uh, wings even though they were both painted the same color. So went back with some uh, Vallejo game color hexed lichen and uh, 
somewhat thin and just adding a bit of shade and color to the bottom of all those back fins, spine fins. And um, once again, like I said, purple is a nice color that goes with red, so it, it works very well. Um, you can also use greens with red since they complement each other very well. I decided to not go with greens, but I could do the same thing with greens um, if I added more greens to other areas on the model, which I didn't do, but that is a different option if you, know, you don't want to go with purples. And with that, we are done. This guy's a little bit too big for my photo booth area, um, so the lighting's not that great. I will add a few still shots at the end so you can get a closer look at them. Uh, again, the whole point of this series is to make something uh, fairly quick, and uh, I know something like a huge dragon you may think it takes months to paint only for it to be put on the table and then killed off and never seen again. Uh, but this job I painted a couple days, and a lot of that was just waiting for washes to dry, so you don't have to be intimidated by a huge project like this as long as you, you know, keep things fairly simple. One thing I should mention is that uh, I recommend adding some support to him just on this figure, not the whole Bones Dragon line. Uh, but I did notice he seemed to be drooping very slowly, leaning towards the front, so I did have to drill in and insert a brass rod into the ankle leg area uh, to hopefully keep him a bit more supportive, and so, especially when there's, during the summer, he doesn't just eventually hit the floor. But uh, there we have it, Ember from Reaper Bones. Thanks for watching. See you next time.